Hi, I'm Elaine and welcome to my kitchen. Well today I'm going to be making a Texas sheet cake. Now if you've never had a Texas sheet cake and you like chocolate, you won't be disappointed if you try this recipe and this would be great for a Valentine's Day treat uh, to share with someone special. So um, let's go ahead and get this started. Now in this mixing bowl I have two cups of flour and two cups of sugar. Now the flour was sifted first and then measured for accuracy because flour will pack down in the bag and you'll get too much flour and your cake will end up being <clears throat> end up being dry. So um, it's always a good idea to sift first and then measure. Okay so we have that prepared and I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to go over to my stove so I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, I have a heavy saucepan and I'm going to turn my burner on and I also have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. That's what you just heard come up just now. But I'm going to, in my saucepan, I'm going to add one cup of water. And let me grab a spoon. And I'm going to add one half cup of shortening. Oh, splattered a little bit, but that's okay. Won't hurt a thing. One stick of butter. And four tablespoons of cocoa. And what we're going to do is bring this to a boil. And so I'm just going to kind of keep stirring it around here. I don't want that uh, cocoa to scorch. So I'm going to keep stirring this around and uh, keep it from it. Now this cake, what I probably will do is just take us maybe out a piece right now and then uh, I'm going to cut the rest of it up into individual slices and put that in the freezer so we'll have that whenever we uh, would like to have something like that. So. And this is going to be melting soon. So when this comes to a boil, I'll be back and I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, our mixture has come to a boil and I have taken it off the heat. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this in to my flour mixture. like that. Now this is a very, very popular cake in the South. You see a lot of these uh, Texas sheet cakes. I first started making this one probably back in the 1980s. I don't even remember where I got the recipe, but I suspect it was probably from uh, either one of those church ladies cookbooks or um, I don't know, maybe a Southern Living magazine. I don't remember where I got this exactly, but I've been making it since then, and it's really a great recipe. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of stir that around just a little bit, just to kind of get it started mixing, because we don't want to overmix it. So I'm just going to kind of get it started right now. And... Um, my husband's over there watching TV. If you hear him talking in the background, sometimes he talks to the TV. So, and he does know I'm recording. I think he's forgotten. <laughs> anyway, okay. So now I have just kind of got that started. And what I'm going to do is move that aside just for a minute. And this is one half cup buttermilk. And now to that one half cup buttermilk, I'm going to dissolve one half teaspoon of baking soda. Now this is baking soda and not baking powder. Baking soda. And I'm going to dissolve that. I'm not just going to grab a fork here. I'm going to dissolve that into the baking soda. Or I'm sorry, into the buttermilk. And what that's going to do is it reacts, the soda is going to react with the buttermilk and it releases CO2 which causes uh, which uh, causes little bubbles to form 
and it will cause the cake, it'll help the cake be very light and airy, which is what we want. This is not a heavy cake. And I'm just going to dump that right in. And then I'm going to add my eggs. There's two large eggs. And the last thing we're going to add is one and one half teaspoons of vanilla. So here's here goes the first one. Okay. And oh, let me put a little bit back. There we go. Okay. And that was about one and a half teaspoons. I don't measure my vanilla very precisely because if I get just a tad more, it's not going to hurt a thing. Okay, so I'm just going to start stirring this together a little bit. And start mixing this, this in, these eggs. And I have um, a 15 and a half by one inch um, jelly roll pan that I'm going to cook this in. Um, it's been greased and floured and so we're going to pour this batter right in there when we get it mixed and I got it started so now let's put that in there so it doesn't get too dirty my counter dirty and now I'm going to put it on my mixer my mixer over here Okay, I'm going to put this on my mixer for just a few minutes, just long enough to get it mixed good. And when I do, I will be right back. I never like to do this on camera because it's too noisy. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, I have my greased and floured baking sheet. And what I'm going to do now is just pour that batter right in. Just like so. And if you see the little any little lumps of flour, that's okay because that will bake that'll bake right in. It'll absorb in as it bakes and it will be fine. Okay. Now I only had it on the mixer for maybe oh about 30 seconds. Because I didn't want to over mix. Again, when you over mix a cake, it can also cause it to be dry. And we don't want this to be dry. Okay, now I'm going to put this in the oven and I'm going to bake this for about 20 minutes. But about 10 minutes after it is started, I am going to make the frosting because you pour that, actually pour that over the hot cake. And that's very important that you do that while it's hot because that's going to soak in and make a really nice cake. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven and I will be back with you when I'm ready to start the frosting. Okay, my cake has got six minutes left on the timer, so I'm a little later than I meant to be, but this is okay. It's going to be fine. So I'm going to turn the heat on, and what I have here in the pot right now is I have one stick of butter. And to that one stick of butter, I'm going to add six tablespoons of milk. One teaspoon of vanilla so I'm just going to use the cap the cap is about three quarters so I'm going to put a little more there we go all right and to that I'm going to add four tablespoons of cocoa Okay, and now we're going to just bring that to a boil. Okay, my butter has melted and my mixture has come to a boil. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one pound of confectioner sugar. Start stirring that in. And 
And when I get that mixed in, I'm going to be adding some chopped pecans to it. Now, you don't have to add nuts. This works just fine without nuts. Um, I have made it many times without nuts because of not having any on hand. Okay. I'm going to get a whisk because it's got some lumps of sugar in it that I want to get out. So let me grab a whisk. Drawer. There it is. Sometimes my husband puts the dishes away and doesn't always put them where I want them. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're just going to whisk that uh, sugar right in. And again, if there's some tiny lumps, it's usually fine because typically it'll absorb into that hot liquid anyway. So. Okay, and I'm just going to keep this on a very, very low, and that was the one minute timer on my cake. So when I take this cake out of the oven and I'm ready to pour this topping on it, I will be right back with you. Okay, I have taken my cake out of the oven, and what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to kind of start poking this with a meat fork. This cake is going to be very, very light. Um, also, under my cooling rack that I have my cake sitting on, I have put some wax paper because when you pour this frosting on the cake, more than likely it's going to run over the sides a little bit because even though it's pulled away from the sides and there's a little room under there, um, it's still going to make a mess. So I always put some uh, wax paper underneath my plate so that I can uh, catch anything that drips. Okay, and here is our, fro our icing. Now it's thin right now, and that's good because we're just going to pour it over the cake. I'm trying to keep as much to the center as I can because again, it does spill over. I don't want it to spill too much. Now you have to work fairly fast with this because it does harden up pretty quick and starts to get firm like a, like a fudge or a candy. So now I'm just going to start spreading that around on my cake. Oops, see, there, there some goes right there. I'm going to try and catch that and push that back towards the center. And i got some on that side trying to do the same thing. But that's okay. That's why we put the wax paper there. And again, you absolutely do not have to use nuts. If you have allergies to nuts, or you're going to be serving it to people that you know have allergies, or you just don't care for nuts. Um, they do not have to be added at all. And this works just fine without it. I've done it both ways. Okay, I just got to get that pushed a little bit over to the edge there. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of brush, smooth this out the best I can. And there we have it. There is our Texas sheet cake. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you will try this cake. I don't believe you'll be disappointed if you do. And if you did enjoy the video, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel. And also leave a comment down below, because I do love reading the comments as well. And I always try to respond as uh, quickly as I can. Um, so y'all have a good day, and thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.